guys, today we are going to review the iconic Galil ARM. So this is really one of Israel's most famous weapon designs. Uh, this is an amazing, hard-hitting, very, very accurate, very versatile assault rifle. Uh, probably one of the best military weapons ever designed, in my opinion. This is really an icon of the 20th century um, and still in use today in many countries. Um, I personally have a history with this weapon because I was issued a version of the Galil during my IDF service. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something that I have a, a personal emotional attachment to and I know how effective this is. Um, so what's the history of this gun? Well, let's go back to the 1960s. The Six Day War in 1967, Israel fought with its neighbors with Jordan, Egypt and Syria. Uh, the Israeli forces at the time were armed primarily with Uzis and the FN Fal. The FN Fal is a really amazingly made, well made, very accurate, hard hitting rifle. It shoots a 7.62 cartridge, 7.62 NATO, uh, very powerful, very long range, but it's not very rugged. It's not a great choice for desert environments where there's a lot of sand blowing. It's going to foul up the gun. The Uzi is very rugged but it's just a 9mm and it doesn't really have the range. It's great for close range, for close quarter engagements, but it's not an ideal weapon for intermediate range engagements or long range engagements. So when the IDF was confronting Egyptian forces in the Sinai um, in the Six Day War, as well as in the Yom Kippur War, they were dealing with a lot of grit and grime and their fouls were fouling up. Whereas the Egyptian soldiers were armed with AKs, Kalashnikovs, that were not. They were able to absorb all that dirt and grit and they just kept on going. And the Uzis, which weren't fouling up, didn't really have the range and the stopping power of the AKs, so very often the Israeli forces were at a disadvantage to the Arab forces. So the IDF decided to design and adopt a new rifle altogether to replace the Fal and the Uzi, at least to replace them as, as frontline weapons. Uh, something that would not only compete on an equal basis with the AK, but something that would supersede it in terms of its abilities. Um, Israel did capture a huge quantity of, of AKs, uh, mainly Type 3s, from the Egyptians and the Syrians in both the Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War, and actually later on too in the Lebanon War. In 1982, huge amounts of uh, AKs were captured from the PLO. But going back to the period between the Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War, uh, they commissioned Yisrael Galil, uh, whose original name was Yisrael Balashnikov. Kalashnikov, Balashnikov, ironic, huh? Anyhow, so uh, Yisrael Galil designed what you see right here, the Galil ARM. Now, I have to mention, he didn't design this from scratch in the way Eugene Stoner designed the M16. He did borrow from a lot of existing gun designs. So if, if you look at this weapon, you'll notice there's a lot of similarities to the AK, and especially to the Finnish Valnet. So Galil wanted to have a gun that was going to have the ruggedness of the AK, but the accuracy of the M16, and also agility and compactness and just kind of everything in one. So he borrowed from other guns too. If you look at the folding stock here and the pistol grip, those were borrowed from the newer versions of the FN Fal. So it, it, there's a lot of, uh, of, of different designs that are thrown in here, the best of which were, were put together uh, and combined to form the rifle that you see here. So this has got the ruggedness of the AK, but the accuracy uh, and precision of the M16 and then the um, the ergonomics and contours of the foul. So let's look really closely at this weapon and, and, and what it has to offer and, and how it is similar to the AK and other weapons, etc. So first thing you'll notice, it's got a, an AK style selector switch up and down over here. So that, if you're familiar with AKs, you'll be pretty familiar with. But what it has that AKs don't, and that's really cool, is it is ambi. It's got a selector switch on this side too. So watch what's happening when I'm moving it with my thumb, you can actually adjust it like that. You don't actually have to take your shooting hand off the weapon to adjust your selector. Now that's number one. Number two, uh, if you're familiar with AKs, you'll know that the charging handle is right side. So the AK was designed for the soldier to take his right hand and to charge it like that. Now the problem with that is 
that's not a great way to use the weapon. You don't want to take your shooting hand off the pistol grip. You really don't want to do it. Um, so they just, the Israelis redesigned this weapon so that you don't have to take your right hand off the shooting grip. They angled the charging handle up. So what you can do now, you take your left hand and you cock it from the top, which is a really amazing design. Uh, I really love that. Uh, another thing that they added was the integral bipod. So this is really, really cool right here. The bipod folds into this latch inside of the handguard. Uh, just, it just folds nicely in there, and then whenever you need it, you pinch it, and it pops open, and you can engage the bipod, which really keeps it very, very stable uh, during intense fire. Um, the Galil also has flip-up night sights, front and rear. Uh, these originally had tritium. Now, this gun is pretty old. Uh, these sights are past their prime, and the tritium has died out ever since, but uh, they're still there, and you can always replace the tritium in those sights to shoot at night. Again, that was a, a really advanced design for that time, and we're talking, you know, late 60s, early 70s here. Uh, another thing you can see is an M16 style birdcage flash hider. Uh, that is not something that you would find on the AK. Uh, that is uh, a really, really great design uh, for the time specifically. Now it's got this foul style folding stock that we talked about earlier, uh, which is really rugged. It does not wobble. A lot of folding stocks have a tendency to wobble. This one doesn't. Um, and the way we would use these in the IDF, the way we would close them, we would just actually just hit them against our so shoulder like that. And they flip close. And you could fire the weapon inside of a vehicle with the stock closed like this. You could carry the weapon in a vehicle and pop the stock open, engage, and then close it. So, stock open, stock closed. Really, really cool design there. Really amazing system. Uh, the mag release is under here. It's extended so that you can use your index finger to just push forward and the mag drops right out. The magazines are 35 round magazines as opposed to 30 uh, from the AK and the uh, M16. These are really rugged construction. Uh, solid steel mags, a little bit heavy, but they are very, very well built. Uh, another really cool feature that they added in here is, believe it or not, a bottle opener. So um, a lot of the magazines of the Uzis were being damaged by soldiers popping open bottles with them, bottle caps, and so they wanted to avoid that. So you can actually open a bottle with this hook right here. You can open a bottle, believe it or not. Um, that is a design feature. And another thing you have inside of the bipod is a wire cutter. You can actually cut wires with this. So this is a, this is a <laughs> hell of a rifle. I mean, this is something that at the time in, in the early 70s just didn't exist. And so uh, it was a really advanced design and, and really, really effective. And so this went into production uh, in the early 70s. Not a lot of them were in service by the time of the Yom Kippur War, even though this had already been designed by that time. Very few were actually in service. Yom Kippur War, October 1973, most Israeli forces were still armed with the FAL or the Uzi. There were a few of these uh, in service. Now, Israel was supposed to adopt this as the standard issue weapon of the entire IDF. Um, but that didn't exactly work out the way it was planned. And ironically, that's because of the U.S. intervention. So what happened there, uh, Israel came pretty close to losing the Yom Kippur War. Um, they were surprised by the Egyptians and the Syrians and almost overwhelmed. And um, a lot of their stockpiles of arms were being depleted quickly. Uh, and then um, the United States decided to provide is Israel with a lot of arms. And those arms included uh, F-4 Phantom jets, uh, tanks, and as well as hundreds of thousands of M16A1 rifles. And, and so that, those were all given to Israel as military aid in what became known as the Rakivet Avivit, the air train. Um, and so before the Galil even went into mass production, the Israelis were adopting the M16 in mass. And the M16 um, is a very light, accurate weapon. It's, it's, it's an amazing combat weapon. It's not so rugged for desert warfare. It, it does tend to jam a lot. But it was extremely successful. So as the IDF is starting to produce and issue the Galil, 
the M16 is going into service. So this was always in competition from the day it was born with the M16. Um, one disadvantage the Galil has is its weight. This is a heavy weapon. Okay, it, you, you're paying for that ruggedness. You're paying for everything that you have in the weight. It is not a light weapon, whereas the M16 is pretty heavy. In many ways, this is a superior weapon to the M16 because of its ruggedness, but uh, in the end, the M16 did prevail, uh, and the Galil was phased out of service by 2009. Uh, but not before it saw extensive use in the Lebanon War in 1982, as well as the first and second Intifada, and that was when I was carrying a version of this weapon. So, um, this is really one of, it's, 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 it's been a very, very successful weapon. Uh, versions of these were exported to a variety of countries across the world. Uh, the South Africans built a version of the Galil under contract known as the R4 and R5. Uh, and the South African military, to this day, is still equipped primarily with Galil rifles, known as, again, the R4 and R5. A lot of Galils were exported and built under contract in South America, uh, specifically to Colombia. Colombia, the, uh, the, the main battle rifle of the Colombian military to this day is the Galil. Uh, but it also a lot of other countries were using the Galil as well in Latin America. Um, and it proved, again, extremely, uh, extremely effective in those conflicts that were being fought there uh, throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and even today. And uh, this weapon began being imported to the U.S. Uh, for the civilian market in the early 1980s. Uh, IMI, Israel Military Industries, uh, began importing a semi-auto version with, through Action Arms in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, to the U.S. and uh, became very, very popular until uh, there was an import ban uh, in 1989 and they couldn't be imported in that configuration anymore. Uh, but later on, there was a version of the Galil Sporter, uh, which was imported, a little bit of a different uh, type of Galil. And then nowadays, a lot of Galils are being built stateside out of parts kits, basically chopped up Israeli surplus rifles that are being uh, rebuilt on uh, semi-auto receivers and, uh, and turned into you know, legal civilian-owned uh, uh, rifles. And, and these are very, very popular, very effective for uh, civilians in the U.S. There are several different versions of the Galil. This is the original. This is the ARM. There was later uh, designed a shorter version known as the Glilon in Hebrew, or the Galil SAR. That was the one actually I carried in the IDF. Then later there was the Micro Galil, which is an even smaller, more compact design, uh, issued mainly to Israeli police forces and the Knesset guards, exported wi widely abroad as well. And then in recent years, IWY, which is the successor to IMI, has introduced a line of uh, Galil-type rifles known as the ACE. Uh, I don't really consider them Galils per se. They're kind of more Galil-influenced, but that's a whole different discussion altogether. Um, anyhow, this is really an amazing weapon. Um, if you can get your hands on one, I really strongly recommend that you do. Uh, there's a few different companies uh, that do manufacture uh, Galils based on, you know, built out of these part kits, specifically James River Arms, JRA, uh, and some others uh, that have made these. Some aftermarket companies uh, were more successful than others. There was, in the early 2000s, a Galil uh, type clone called the Golani. Very unsuccessful, uh, jamming up the wazoo. If you find one of those, don't buy it. Stay away from it. The best out there that you can find are the original 1980s era IMI imports, but those are very, very expensive. Um, but either way, this is an awesome weapon. Um, let's take it to the range and shoot it. I'm very excited. quite like a Galil. Let's go with another magazine. Shoot from the needle this time.
I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go prone now. So we're gonna pop open the bipod. That magazine in there. That is nice, that is so smooth, so accurate. All right, man, that is amazing. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward and advance on a target with this thing. Let's see how that goes. Wow, that was really smooth. That was that was awesome. I really love that. There's just something about the Galil. Uh, it is so accurate. It is it is so pleasant to shoot. There was practically no recoil whatsoever. Uh, that's probably a result of the gun being so heavy. Um, but it is a very reliable gun. It is very comfortable. Um, I don't really mind the weight. You know, I'm a big guy. I can handle it just fine. Um, I've carried this weapon in combat, and um, I trust it with my life. And I'd gladly do that again. You know, any day. So. If you're looking for a good defensive rifle, I would strongly recommend the Galil. Galil ARM, uh, second to none. So, if you guys want to come and train on this weapon, you're welcome to join me at Herb Gidon Israeli Tactical Training Academy. I run tactical Galil courses using Israeli defensive firearms training methods. So, feel free to join me anytime. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.